Say we're given the polynomial function that we see here, that's f of x, which equals to 2x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 minus 13x squared minus 6x plus 6, and that we're asked to find its roots, or to find its zeros. To do that, I follow the same two-step method that I used in the previous example. Remember, that was step 1. We use the rational root theorem, or rational zero theorem, to come up with a list of all of the potential zeros of this polynomial function. Now, the rational zero theorem tells us that any zero of this polynomial must be of the form p over q, where p has to be a factor of the constant term, that's 6 here, and q has to be a factor of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 2. So I'll just go ahead and write that this has to equal to a factor of 6, over a factor of 2. So to be clear here, if any of the zeros of this polynomial function are rational numbers, then they must be equal to some factor of 6 over some factor of 2. Now the factors of 6 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. And the factors of 2 are plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 2. So using these factors, we can now make a list of potential rational zeros of this polynomial function. Indeed, all we have to do is to look at each of the factors of 6 and divide them by each of the factors of 2. And when doing so, we'll only consider the positive factors of 2. In other words, we'll only consider 1 and 2, since we'll be considering the plus or minus possibilities for the factors of 6. So let's go ahead. Say the factor of 2 is 1, then that leads to the following potential rational zeros. Plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, plus or minus 3 over 1, and plus or minus 6 over 1. In other words, we already have the following possible rational zeros. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. We carry on. Say the factor of 2 is 2 then in that case, dividing the factors of 6 by 2 leads to the following. We'd have plus or minus 1 over 2, so I'll just write that. That's plus or minus 1 over 2. We'd also have plus or minus 2 over 2, but that simply leads to plus or minus 1, which we've already listed. We'd also have plus or minus 3 over 2, so we can list that one as well, so that's plus or minus 3 over 2. And finally, we'd have plus or minus 6 over 2, but that would simply equal to plus or minus 3, which we've already listed here. So that's the complete list of potential rational zeros for this polynomial function. And that's the end of step 1. We move on to step 2. And in step 2, we use trial and error to evaluate whether or not f of x, our polynomial function, is equal to 0 when x takes on the values that we have here in our list. In other words, we're going to use trial and error to determine whether or not any of these are indeed zeros of our function. So let's go ahead. I'll start by evaluating f of x when x equals to negative 1. And to do that, I use Horner's method. And for that, I start by making a table like so. And now I copy the coefficients of f of x, so those would be 2, 1, negative 13, negative 6, and 6 at the top of the table. That's 2, 1, negative 13, negative 6, and 6. And as I said, I'll start by evaluating this polynomial when x equals to negative 1. So I write negative 1 at the top of the table. OK, so I now carry down this 2 to the bottom of the table, like so. And now, negative 1 times 2 equals to negative 2. I now add this negative 2 to the 1 above it, so that's 1 plus negative 2, which equals to negative 1. Now, negative 1 times negative 1 equals to 1, and I now add this 1 to the negative 13 above it. So that's negative 13 plus 1, which equals to negative 12. I carry on, negative 1 times negative 12, which equals to 12, and I now add this 12 to the negative 6 above it, so that's negative 6 plus 12, which equals to 6. Carrying on, I multiply negative 1 with 6, which equals to negative 6, and I add this negative 6 to the 6 that's directly above it, 
and we can see right away that 6 plus negative 6 equals to 0. And since this equals to 0, the factor theorem allows us to state that negative 1 is a 0 of this polynomial function. Furthermore, the factor theorem also allows us to state that x minus negative 1, in other words, x plus 1, is a factor to this polynomial. That is, we can rewrite f of x as f of x equals to x plus 1 times the quotient polynomial. And following what we learnt on synthetic division, we know that the quotient polynomial is a cubic polynomial, and its coefficients are the first four numbers that we see at the bottom of our table here. In other words, the quotient polynomial is 2x to the power of 3 minus x squared minus 12x plus 6. Now that we have one of the zeros, which was negative 1, we carry on and we check whether or not any more of the rational numbers that we have inside this list are also zeros. And you can go ahead and check, but if you check for x equals to 1, it won't equal to 0. If you check for x equals to plus or minus 2, it won't equal to 0 either. And for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of saving time, I'll go ahead and check whether or not 1 over 2 is one of this polynomial zeros. And to make our lives easier, rather than working with the full function f of x, we can simplify the problem a bit by working with the cubic polynomial that we obtained when we factored f of x. In other words, we're now going to look at the function 2x cubed minus x squared minus 12x plus 6. And to evaluate this when x equals to 1 half, we use Horner's method again. So I start by drawing my table, like so, and I now copy the coefficients. Those are 2, negative 1, negative 12, and 6. So I write those at the top. That's 2, negative 1, negative 12, and 6. And remember I said that I'll evaluate this when x equals to a half. So I write 1 over 2 on the left-hand side here. I carry down the 2 to the bottom of the table, like so, and now we can get started. So 1 over 2 times 2 is equal to 1. I now add this 1 to the negative 1 directly above it. Now negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. I carry on. 1 over 2 times 0 is equal to 0. And I now add this 0 to the negative 12 above it. So that's negative 12 plus 0, which equals to negative 12. Now 1 over 2 times negative 12 is equal to negative 6. I now add this negative 6 to the 6 above it. And we can see that 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. And the fact that this equals to 0 tells us that we found another one of this polynomial zeros. Indeed, 1 over 2 or 1 half is one of this polynomial zeros. And now the factor theorem allows us to state that we can rewrite this cubic polynomial. That's 2x cubed minus x squared minus 12x plus 6 as x minus 1 over 2, where 1 over 2 is a 0 we just found, times the quotient polynomial function. And in this case, the quotient polynomial function is a quadratic function whose coefficients are the first three numbers we have at the bottom of the table here. In other words, it's 2x squared plus 0x minus 12. And all we have to do now to find any remaining zeros of this polynomial is solve this quadratic equation. And we know how to do that. Indeed, we can solve 2x squared minus 12 equals to 0 quite quickly. That's 2x squared equals to 12, and that's x squared equals to 6. Finally, that leads to x equals to plus or minus the square root of 6. And these results allow us to rewrite the quadratic 2x squared minus 12 as 2 times x minus the square root of 6 times x plus the square root of 6. And at this stage, we found all of the zeros of this polynomial. And to highlight that fact, let's write this polynomial in its factored form. And to do that, I'm going to combine all of the results that I'm currently underlining in yellow. Indeed, combining all these results, we can go ahead and state that f of x is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1 over 2 times 2 times 
x minus the square root of 6 times x plus the square root of 6. And we can reorder that to write f of x equals to 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 over 2 times x minus the square root of 6 times x plus the square root of 6. This is known as writing the polynomial in its root factored form. And it allows us to quickly see all of the roots or zeros of this polynomial. Here's what I mean. This first factor, x plus 1, shows us that if x equals to negative 1, then this entire polynomial will equal to 0. Similarly, this second factor, x minus 1 over 2, shows us that if x equals to 1 over 2, again, the entire polynomial will equal to 0. And in the same way, this third factor shows us that if x equals to the square root of 6, the entire polynomial will equal to 0. And finally, the fourth factor shows us that if x equals to negative square root of 6, it will also equal to 0. So this polynomial has four zeros, and those are negative 1, 1 over 2, negative square root of 6, and square root of 6. And we're done. We have found all of the zeros for this polynomial function. Now notice that only two of the zeros were in the list of rational numbers that we found in step 1. Indeed, both negative root 6 and root 6 are irrational numbers, and this highlights an important fact. The rational root or rational zero theorem only helps us in finding rational zeros. Those are zeros which are rational numbers. For any irrational zeros like the ones we have here, we're left to rely on other methods, like our knowledge of quadratic equations that we used here. And alternatively, we could always rely on graphical methods, meaning our calculators. And there we have it. We now know how to use the rational root theorem, or rational zero theorem, to help us find the zeros of a polynomial function. And that's it for this tutorial.